This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Richard Allen is going to trial. Jury selection set for beginning May 13th of 2024. The speedy trial request granted. Although, in reality, Judge Gull really had no choice in the matter. She had to grant it no matter what. Now, does that mean that there could not still be delays? Well, yeah, there still could be delays. We don't know exactly how or when or what yet. One of those possible delays could be the request for that's Frank's hearing, which has now been filed by Richard Allen's defense team. Joining us to discuss the case, Jennifer Coffendaffer, retired FBI special agent, what do you think? Are we going to get a Frank's hearing on this finally? Uh, or is just a lot of this going to have to come out during the trial? Well, it, it wouldn't make sense, uh, I don't think, uh, for them not to have a Frank's hearing when she agreed to a Frank's hearing before. <laughs> yes. And then denied the request after that. Right. Exactly. So I think that, you know, it makes sense. And and also, I think she must real, realize that the Supreme Court of Indiana is looking over her shoulder a bit, mm-hmm. potentially, on this. And, and maybe she's making some rulings uh, with that in mind, although she hasn't really changed anything at this point that I've seen. I hope there will be a Frank's hearing. I think it's an injustice if there is not one. What could the outcome be of of the Frank's hearing. Let's say they go through it and they they do clearly find, um, you know, misconduct on the part of law enforcement. How would that affect the whole case? Well, it can really affect the whole case because if somebody is proven to have planted evidence, to have not told the truth, to have purposefully uh, taped over a conversation, something like this, uh, that could mean that individual would not be able to testify at the hearing. Mm-hmm. And if they can't testify at the hearing, that could, you know, mean some evidence could not come in. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be really detrimental to the prosecution if something like that occurred. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if Richard Allen is convicted on these crimes, he he truly has a get a new trial free card with him, with everything that has uh, has taken place. But if he's found innocent, then I guess, you know, Game over uh, for for him anyway. But the reality is, though, you still have a killer out there if he's innocent that Delphi has not wanted to look into because they've been so hell bent saying it's Richard Allen. It's Richard Allen. La, 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 la. It's Richard Allen. Uh, That's got to be ultimately, I mean, for the families. And that's what this is all about. Absolutely heartbreaking that the people you rely on to to try and, and prosecute and to find the right person it puts you back at square one several years now back. I, You know, the most interesting part of this case, and I think what's going to be the biggest issue for the prosecution, is the FBI's stance on this case, at least early on. We haven't heard from them because they have not been allowed to be a part of the case for mm-hmm. quite some time. But, you know, early on, they prepared that probable cause affidavit for a search warrant. And in there, it says that they uh, there's probable cause to believe that uh, uh, Ron Logan committed Mm -hmm. this crime. And I'll be very interested to see, because obviously uh, the defense attorney is going to call this agent Mm -hmm. who testified under oath. And they're, you know, I noticed that they are seeking the information from the geofencing, which again shows Ron Logan's phone there. Um, so I think their biggest issue and hurdle they're going to have to overcome is the probable cause that exists and existed uh, that Ron Logan mm-hmm. uh, committed this crime. To me, that's just going to be hard for them to overcome all of this other uh, issues. Uh, aside and the geofencing data is very interesting because they do is they have like two or three people that cross basically into that area geofence wise uh of of where the murder took place the day took place the time they believe it took place none of which those people are richard allen uh that are on that list um that just seems to be like another glaring piece here to this whole case of well why didn't we look into this further why like why i mean that's pretty damn accurate information or at least something some road to go down 
uh, and explore, I guess, are we going to learn a lot here, whether it be in the Franks hearing or whether it be in the trial of law enforcement in this case in Delphi really just, you know, sticking their head in the sand going, we got our guy, let's keep moving. Well, I think the geofencing information is going to be another dagger. Uh, it's another dagger because, as you said, Richard Allen did show up on the geofence. And I'm sure they'll try to get a expert to explain, well, there are situations where a phone might not show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would believe that the defense will hopefully get a expert that would say the opposite. So then it's going to be looking for the jury to look at their credentials uh, to see who has the most experience, to see whose argument made the most sense and and to figure out who's telling the truth or not. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.